I just want to say hello to everybody. Thank you for attending. I'm going to switch that off just to make sure. Um, I'm trying to figure out. Uh, just so that you know that it's a human behind the screen here. Okay, um, before I begin, uh, I just want to mention um, why it's important to upgrade beyond the, uh, the, the fact that it is um, good system administration to do that. Um, if you've known lately in the news, there's been uh, the issue about the Panama Papers. And the reason the Panama Papers were um, made available or hacked was that the, uh, the company in Mexico, the attorneys, used old versions of WordPress and, uh, and a content management system, I can't remember. So it was very easy for uh, these hackers to get in there and, and grab the, the content. Now you don't want this to happen with your repository. You don't want people to go in there uh, and get uh, full access to your database, for example, or full access to your uh, Tomcat web server and uh, and then they can um, basically uh, ransom your assets from you, uh, possibly. And it, the tragedy would be is if you don't have a disaster recovery system um, or you don't have any backups running, they may be able to steal all your born digital assets. And, uh, that, that would be a tragedy. Okay, so let me go into the actual process of upgrading. Now, I'm assuming you've realized the importance of it. And, um, uh, now I'm just going to show you how to how to actually do a, a DSpace upgrade. Um, I just want to type in here uh, in the chat bar if you if you can manage to look in another screen here at this link. Uh, if you look from that web page there, that wiki page, you will notice um, I have a column there about the version of DSpace that um, that, are, that are listed there. And you can see that um, a lot of these spaces are still on version 4, version 3, version 1 even in South Africa. Out of about 30 to 20 repositories in South Africa, um, only 2 or 3 are on, uh, so about 4, 5, 5 are on version 5, the rest are on versions um, lower than that. Okay. Alright, let me begin. Uh, start here. Right, so an upgrade means this is a change and uh, I want to take this opportunity to introduce you to what we call change management in the IT world or IT service management. Um, it's that there, I hope you can see the mouse there. Uh, the IT service management, uh, we call it change management. So I'm asking you to ask this question, how do you manage changes so that they do not affect the uptimes on the production system too much and are controlled by all interested parties? Use a change management system. For more details about a change management system, please click on that link. But I suggest strongly that you become familiar with that. As I said, you want to um, uh, reduce, well, you want to keep uptimes on your production system. So uh, please use a change management system. Right, let's go to the next slide. How do we do change management at Stellenbosch University? Well, we built a test development system on another server. Uh, it was an old server. Um, and now we are using a, a virtual machine. Uh, and uh, I've set up another repository called uh, repository.sun.ac.za. It's only available on campus. Uh, it's not open on the campus firewall. So this is the machine that um, I use to test changes and uh, uh, test the upgrades of software before I implement it on the production server. So um, the best practice uh, is not to test uh, well, an upgrade on a production server because you'll take the production server down for too long. Uh, the best practice is to um, install another system uh, that is almost identical to the production system and then do the upgrade on there. Another tip or best practice is try not to make major changes to the system during peak usage times of the year. So um, I try to make sure that my upgrades only happen during the winter and the summer vacations in the summer hemisphere. Um, whatever vacation time you have at your institution, when it's quiet, and I'm, I'm talking about there are not many users, but there's still um, a lot of staff, IT staff around, 
that is the time to um, actually do the upgrade. That's the ideal time. So again here, pick a time when there are very few users on the system so you don't affect too many people with the production system downtime. Another thing, uh, if you have service level agreements with the IT department, then it's uh, just uh, good manners to inform them that you're going to upgrade the system and that you will probably need their assistance so that they can also plan. Um, one of the problems with doing an upgrade during um, vacation times is a lot of the central IT staff also go on vacation so um, I'll make sure, I'll try to make sure that, um, that they're available during my upgrade time. Okay, next slide. Also, another best practice is to keep your viewers, users in the loop um, and try and inform them that what, what your intentions are and what you're planning to do. Uh, for that, we have a mailing list, uh, uh, Scholar Mailing, Sun Scholar, I think it's called. I don't operate it, um, the librarians operate it, and uh, they set up uh, a notice and send out a notice to everybody. They also um, inf inform um, the metadata editors, the catalogers, uh, about the upgrade, um, so everybody in the library is aware of it. Okay, uh, for the normal users, um, we have a, a lady who looks after the website, we try and send a notification on the website and then uh, she, manages, she will talk to the uh, campus communications manager and uh, they send out a, a notice to the, to, to the users, all the users, the staff and, and students. So when the time comes for the change, we put the system, what I call into maintenance mode, which basically I shut down Tomcat or something to make sure um, it's not available. Uh, to the users while I'm doing the upgrade uh, or whatever. Uh, another best practice, uh, very important, is before changing anything on the production server, make sure your backups are working. Whatever you do, if any major change was small or minor, always make sure your backups are working. Uh, at the moment, our backup server um, keeps incremental backups for seven days. Um, if you have more capacity in the backup servers, it's a good idea maybe to keep it uh, backups for uh, two weeks or three weeks. So there we go. Um, please go through these slides carefully and read these comments about the best practices. Um, they will save you a lot of heartache. Uh, something I've learned through experience is to have a backup and manage the changes so that not too many users are affected by the change and everybody knows what's going on uh, and know that the server or the repository will not be available during that time so the researchers don't, for example, uh, organize a conference during that time and expect to have the server up and running and to refer to. So just make sure that your research community on campus is very clear about when the upgrade is going to happen. Um, so that you avoid uh, too many um, angry calls to your library director. Okay, the upgrade is not just, uh, uh, I know the title of the webinar is the DSpace upgrade, but there's actually, upgrading is not just the DSpace software. Um, the DSpace software, is, they try to release a version every year um, that incorporates the latest changes and the latest bug fixes. So um, at least every year you will need to be uh, ready to upgrade uh, to the latest DSpace. Uh, then in addition, uh, DSpace doesn't run by itself. Uh, it runs on top of uh, a prepared Ubuntu server. Um, again, I've uh, alluded to the fact why we use an Ubuntu server earlier. Um, many reasons. Uh, but that will require uh, an upgrade every three years because we use the LTS, the long-term supported versions, uh, which are released every uh, two years. And uh, in fact, this Thursday, the 21st of April uh, 2016, we'll see the release of Ubuntu 16.04 LTS, the next LTS version, which will be supported for the next five years. Um, so I will probably have to plan an upgrade of the server operating system on Sun Scholar at the end of the year during quiet time. And I'll probably go from 14.04 on that server to 16.04. Anyway, the point is you'll have to, I'll, I will uh, go into more detail of these three upgrade, these three uh, systems upgrade. So number two is the server software. 
Number three, um, the typical hardware warranty lasts about four years. Uh, so I'm expecting if you're using uh, bare metal uh, to run your system, uh, you should expect to uh, do a hardware upgrade uh, every four years. Um, if your system is virtualized or in a cloud, that's not an issue. Um, you can extract hardware. Um, but uh, if you are using hardware, prepare yourself to uh, do a hardware upgrade at least uh, every four years when a typical uh, hardware warranty expires. Okay, so let me go into more detail about each one of those upgrades. Right, let's talk, tackle the DSpace upgrade and the version strategy. Um, we try to stay one major version behind the current DSpace version because uh, on campus we do, or in the library we have expert Java programs on campus, but they just seem to be always uh, occupied maintaining our uh, student system, researcher system, which is customized. Um, so yes, we do have central IT Java programs. We don't have them in the library. So we decided, uh, because of their unavailability or whatever, we, we try to stay one major version behind and let the community fix the bugs uh, uh, of the next version before we upgrade. So that when we upgrade, we upgrade to more stable versions. So as I say, we, stay, we try to stay super stable by staying one version behind the latest version. And we let those with extra programming resources in the community uh, fix bugs in the latest version while we enjoy the stable benefits of the previous version. So just, um, uh, if you are, do not have many uh, Java programmers at your disposal, it's probably to use the same version strategy um, when doing upgrades, just to stay one major version behind the latest version. But now we, uh, because we wanted to implement Orchid, we had to uh, go up to the, to the latest version. And um, so my uh, documentation on the weekly, luckily, uh, is very conveniently um, related to the latest version of DSpace 5.5, so you're welcome to use it. Okay, next one. All right, before um, attempting any upgrades, please try and really read the uh, release notes for those um, versions of DSpace and make a notes of any changes, uh, radical changes between the uh, versions. Um, so that you're fully prepared. Um, yeah, uh, I could go through all the different versions and the changes that are done, but I will leave that as an exercise to you. But uh, as a best practice, the, the first task after doing the change management and the notifications, etc., etc., and before actually doing the upgrade and preparing is to uh, prepare yourself by reading the release notes. Right, uh, general guidelines on the upgrade or, or the methodology that I use for the upgrade is I have an, uh, I use an Ubuntu desktop and I have the program MELD installed. Now this MELD program allows me to compare two folders uh, of files uh, and the differences between the files in the folders. So what I do is I take um, I take the, uh, on my development system, I bring it up to the same uh, level as the production system. Then I copy the uh, DSpace code to my desktop from the development server. And then I copy the latest code also to my desktop and I compare those two code versions. Uh, most specifically, I compare the uh, config folders and the module folders. Uh, and when and then I do, um, I, I um, bring across changes from the old version that I, the, you know, that I want to um, to bring to the new version. I bring them across, and then I look at the new versions and what's required there, um, or the new new features and whatever. And then I set them up. And when I'm happy with that, I copy my version on the desktop back to my uh, development server. Compile it from there on the development server uh, and then see if it runs and everything. And you know, debug as much as I can on the development server. And then when the time comes um, to do the actual production server upgrade, of course, with the change management, everything would bring everything down. And then I sync uh, from my desktop the uh, version that now works on the development server 
a sync it across to the production server and then build on the production server. Now there are some things that you cannot test on the development server and that's available on the production server, things like the, the handle server. The handle server is specific to the production server so that you have to um, keep in mind that, that there are some things you can do as much as you can on the development server, about I think 90% of the work, but there are some things that you have to test on the production server. So that's why I give myself a couple of days on the production server uh, to make sure that those uh, things that can only be done in the production environment are, are done correctly. So that's my methodology. Um, if you're using a Windows machine, I suggest you download some program that's equivalent to MELD. Uh, use the same methodology. Um, have a development server, bring down the development code, bring down the new code, do a comparison of the code. Try to, so try to fix as much as you can on the development server before uh, you do the production server. Okay, that's the methodology. Um, with the, uh, the wiki guide that I've set up, um, I'm also trying to promote uh, what I call a reference architecture in the DSpace technical community. Um, if we all use the same architecture, um, we would then be able to collaborate. Uh, we would be able to collaborate more. I can't think of an English word means collaborating more. Um, we'd basically be able to uh, help each other a lot more because we'll be using the same architecture. Otherwise, we'll be using a, an Ubuntu operating system, a server operating system, and we'll be using the same version of Tomcat and everything. So uh, when we do troubleshooting and helping each other, we don't have to try and uh, fix issues about architecture, which is, if you look at the DSpace manual, it's a lot of issues are revolve around architecture. Um, so it would be great if we um, as a community uh, decided to standardize on a reference architecture. Well, until then, the, the, the DSpace software upgrades, unfortunately, are going to be complex and difficult. It's complex because there's two user interfaces, difficult because uh, you can install DSpace on a Windows server or an Ubuntu server or a Red Hat server or whatever. Um, so the more um, platforms for installation, the more complex the whole upgrade process gets. Um, so hopefully uh, in the future the DSpace technical community will decide uh, to uh, adopt a reference architecture. Okay. Right, what do we need to do before we do the upgrade, the actual upgrade? What is essential in preparation? Well, number one is you must back up your databases, the PostgreSQL and SolarDB, and your Oracle database if you're using Oracle. Those must be backed up before you begin um, an upgrade. Uh, and when I'm talking about backup, backup on the production server. And when I'm talking about the backups here, I'm talking about the backups on the production server. Um, backup any folders with customizations. Um, make sure those are. are uh, a backup. So those are the two essential uh, things to, uh, to do uh, to prepare uh, before doing the backup. And uh, I have links there below uh, to those two, what I call two steps. And once you've done those two, of course, you perform the upgrade. Uh, and then I have the notes there, uh, you perform the upgrade by typing all the right relevant commands. So please have a look at those two links there. Um, if you don't do that, you follow, uh, you do the upgrade at your own risk. Um, I have warned you, uh, please, please, before doing an upgrade, back up the databases, back up the folders with your customizations, and then do the upgrade. And of course, uh, make sure that if you have a disaster recovery backup system running, that that is working and you have the latest backups. Uh, golden rule is you cannot have enough backups on the system, really. Uh, it is essential to have backups. All right, next, uh, oh, next slide. As I mentioned earlier, the methodology is uh, again, I am uh, using Ubuntu desktop. I use MELD, MELD compared folders. I do a comparison of the two versions, I investigate all the differences, and I update the new versions, the new settings, 
and again just to reiterate to repeat when I'm satisfied the new version has most of my customization from the, from the old version then I test on my development server and then I do further debugging on the development server and finally activate it on the production server by using the, uh, on the Linux systems it's very convenient to use rsync to synchronize things between the production and the development server very handy um, the, for example, the upgrade of DSpace from the version 4 to 5 on our Sun Scholar, the preparation on the production server because of the Mirage 2 theme being new took me about a month and a half of my time. So you really, really don't want to be unprepared for your uh, upgrade uh, and you don't really want to bring down the production system for a month. Okay, so again I warn you, please, please use some change management, have a development system, pay everything as much as you can on a development system. If you're using a Ubuntu a desktop, use the MELF program, very convenient, very handy. Okay, continue on with DSpace, um, the checklist, what to upgrade, what gets upgraded, um, and what to check. Normally the database these upgrades, um, these upgrades had to be run manually uh, on the database schema, but now um, with DSpace 5, versions 5 and uh, newer, uh, the database schemas are automatically upgraded. A fantastic new feature with DSpace 5.5, uh, which means theoretically you can upgrade from DSpace 1 to DSpace 5 and all the with complicated uh, database uh, scripts that have to be run per version are done automatically for you. So um, I highly recommend an upgrade to DSpace 5.5, uh, not only because of security reasons, but because of this uh, new facility to uh, the new facility where the database schemas are automatically upgraded. Um, also uh, with DSpace 5. Uh, there were issues um, with previous versions of trying to get the solar, I'm not a solar expert, but the solar uh, database and solar libraries up to the right versions and compatible versions. While with DSpace 5, there are scripts that run and check the solar libraries and code to make sure that um, you're using the right versions. So another great feature with DSpace 5.5 is the, the solar database upgrades, automatic upgrades. Uh, great stuff. Another thing to, um, to check um, during the upgrade is the messages XML file. Now I'm talking about the XML user interface or in the JSP user interface. You must also check uh, if you have uh, custom messages that those messages are also brought along uh, with your upgrade. So definitely check the messages file. Um, another thing, check for as many changes as you can uh, between for the, the discovery browse and search indexes, specifically in a discovery XML file. Um, that's a check. Also, um, remember this is a basic checklist. So number five, check for changes to the handle server. <coughs> Excuse me. And then also, um, also important number six, check for changes to the data class. So besides the config file uh, folders where you check um, changes with mal these are changes outside the config file folder normally and that you must check for um, so I'll just add a, a, a checklist to make sure that you you cover those this is a basic checklist and there are other there are other few things to check uh, along the way as you upgrade you'll see um, another thing to make sure of is that if you apply the plugin or uh, for example, item versioning or so, just to bring it up also to the new version, make sure you test it on the development server as well. Um, so uh, during the development server, you should go to the checklist and you've become uh, practiced at what, what needs to be checked and what needs to be changed during the upgrade. And so that's still the DSpace upgrade. Okay, next slide. Okay, I want to, um, that briefly concludes the DSpace update. But um, the real upgrade is going to take you a long time now, as I said earlier. But I want to include, uh, as I started earlier on, that the DSpace is not the only thing to upgrade. Another thing to upgrade is the server operating system. So what is, 
involved with the server upgrade, say from uh, Ubuntu 14.04 to 16.04. Well, um, what will be upgraded is the Tomcat Java web app server. So you've got to make sure that your DSpace uh, now works with that version of the Java Tomcat uh, web app server. And the Java runtime software, for example, if we'll, we'll probably be using OpenJDK 7, it might, uh, the next upgrade might require uh, you to use OpenJDK 8, so you want to test it with that. The PostgreSQL database, definitely uh, there is an upgrade there, and I've got some notes later on, that's a tricky upgrade um, on the server side. Um, Swift Debian systems, Debian based systems like Ubuntu. Please make a careful note on the development system, how you did the PostgreSQL database upgrade, and then apply it on the uh, production server. So that's the server upgrade. Okay, the methodology for the server upgrade, again, um, I built a test system, and it was the same as the production system. And then on the test system, I did the server up uh, operating uh, system upgrade. Then, um, as I did the server upper, uh, upgrade uh, on the development system, I made a special note of what changed and what what I'll have probably encounter on the production server. And then, when everything was working well on the test system, then I went and actually did the production system upgrade. But using ch uh, remember change management, I made sure everybody's in the, in the mix, everybody knows what's happening, and there's no uh, surprises. So, as I said. Um, uh, um, Ubuntu 16.04 is coming out this Thursday, so um, we have to plan for uh, upgrading to that version. Um, so I would like to make sure that at least uh, all my servers are running uh, Ubuntu 14.04, at least, and uh, so that they are ready for uh, an upgrade to 16.04. I normally wait for the first point release uh, of a stable version before I attempt any upgrades. Um, this again, we, we stay um, behind the, 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 the bleeding edge so that we let the uh, Ubuntu community fix the bugs on the, on the new release. Uh, so I wait for the first point release of the uh, Ubuntu server operating system before I upgrade that. Um, Ubuntu 404, 14.04, sorry, um, is now I think at point release 4. There's been four point releases since the initial release of 14.04. Okay, the next slide. So how do you actually perform a server upgrade? Now, I just wanted to um, give you some tips, what happens, uh, and how to actually do it. So what you do is you log into the server using SSH, and then number one, you run, you install the, uh, the update uh, updating software. Uh, number two, you uh, test it uh, to see how it goes. And then finally, number three, you, you run the, the, the release upgrade. And then um, go find some copy. Um, the server will prompt you about issues and uh, you know, the console. So as the upgrade happens, it's a good idea to um, resolve those issues. Mainly it's about config files that you've changed on the server. They are different to uh, the versions of the upgrade and I'll show the differences and ask you whether you want to keep your version or you want to keep the, what we call the uh, Debian slash Ubuntu package maintainers version. It's always a good best practice to use the uh, maintainers version but to see what the differences are. Why did you change that config file? And then apply it again uh, afterwards if, you, if it's needed uh, after for the server upgrade. But basically, um, if everything goes well, um, you just sit there, drink some coffee, watch it happen. Uh, it's that simple. Upgrades with other um, uh, Linux versions, Linux distributions like Red Hat, um, OpenSUSE, CentOS, uh, etc. Um, I cannot vouch for them. One of the reasons I went to the Debian slash Ubuntu system is because the upgrades are much, much simpler. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Okay, here we go. As I said earlier, uh, if the upgrade fails in the beginning, and here are some tips, remove any non-standard sources. This will make sense to you as you become familiar with the Ubuntu server administration. Uh, that first sentence. Um, 
that is normally the case while the upgrade fails. Um, so take care of that one. Uh, again, when asked whether to keep the maintainer's version of a config file or keep your own custom version of a config file, always select the maintainer's version, but make sure what the differences are so that you can apply them later. Make a note of these files, as I said, uh, these changes that are required, and then after the upgrade, go back and check the config files for any customization you would, like to, you would like to apply as you did to the old server version. And then again, upon stress enough, please take careful note of the Postgres SQL upgrade notes. Yeah, uh, when you do the server upgrade, take very careful note. Uh, next slide. Okay, uh, I just wanted to again say take careful note of the Postgres SQL database upgrade when you do the server upgrade. Uh, and there is the link um, of what you do uh, and actually how to perform the uh, server upgrade, uh, the database upgrade after the server operating system upgrade. And there again, I just want to um, stress that uh, please make a backup uh, before you do anything on the production system. Make a backup of the database. And again, um, repeating, you have been warned. Please make sure uh, you make backups of the database. All right, I also just quickly want to, before I finish off, I see there's almost uh, about 20 minutes of questions. I just want to finish with this one. Um, is the hardware upgrade. Uh, this, as I said, happens every four years, um, but it's a tricky one because um, you have to take the content from one server to the, from, the, from the old server to the new server. So I suggest, if you can, ask for some expert Linux help during that particular upgrade. And uh, if your server is virtualized, please do not worry about this. Um, if you are um, concerned about using a bare metal machine, then I strongly suggest, as I said in, in, the, in, this, in the middle, is to uh, virtualize, but then talk to your uh, central IT uh, and the person who manages the virtualized environment before going that route. But before you go uh, and virtualize, remember there's always a performance price. And because DSpace is already Java web app, and Java itself is a virtual machine, you'll basically be virtualizing a virtual machine. Uh, so there's going to obviously be a performance hit, depending on the virtualization environment you, you use and how many resources you assign to your uh, DSpace uh, system inside that virtualized environment. Okay, that's part one, that's, this is part two. Now, as I said earlier on, um, virtualization has a performance price. The best performance comes from bare metal machines, like using the raw CPUs and the raw RAM for the uh, DSpace application. So please keep that in mind um, when uh, looking at uh, upgrades in the long term, looking at your server capacity, etc. But in the beginning, it may be a good idea, as I said in the second sentence, to start with the virtualized system because it's a small repository and there are a few people connected and working on it. So in the beginning, it might be a good idea to start with virtualization. But as the, as I say in the last sentence there, as the repository gets bigger and more people start using it, you should then start to consider uh, going bare metal for much better performance. And then as again, I just want to repeat, uh, in the same italics there, um, bare metal is definitely preferred uh, uh, for performance reasons. But it just makes the hardware upgrade in the every four years a little bit trickier. Uh, it will require a hard hardware upgrade. If you go for virtualization, the hardware upgrade is not an issue. Okay, next slide. Just a little bit about how to actually do a hardware upgrade. So what I do, and what I've done is we've gone from a, a dull R710 now to I think a Dow uh, 735, I can't remember, server. The warranty expired on all servers. So, what I did is I prepared a new machine with a, with a, a dummy host name. I called it irx.sun.ac.za, uh, the new machine. And then I exported the content, 
digital assets, this asset store, etc., etc., to the uh, new machine. I sent it across from the production machine. Um, and then I prepared the new machine um, with all the Tomcat web apps, etc., you know, and, and whatever. So I tried to, um, as I said, you remember earlier on when you do the upgrade, um, you have two systems and check that the uh, do as much work as you can on the development or new system before you, you hand over. So I tried to do as much as I could on the new system uh, and then I enable the handle server on the new system as well. Um, then when it comes time to bring the new server into production, you use we swap host name. So the machine that was irx.sun, uh, we gave it the host name scholar.sun and the machine that was scholar.sun, we gave it the host name of um, repository does so. so it wouldn't clash with the new uh, production the new uh, production service uh, as now. so now we have a uh, development server called repository at some and uh, we have a production server called scholar at some now the precautionary principles number six there uh, and that's why bold in it underlined it is um, Never take down the old machine. Keep the old machine running for a while, for a couple of months or a couple of weeks at least. Uh, when you bring up, while you bring up the new production machine, because if something very badly goes wrong with the new production system, you can at least go back to the the old machine and uh, uh, keep running that way. Um, so. The, be warned, do not shut down the old machine. Keep it going for a while. Uh, we kept our old machine going for a month here. Yeah. Uh, but we didn't have any problems, luckily. Okay, next slide. Okay, in conclusion, I just want to recap. The upgrading is not just simply the DSpace system. The upgrading is the DSpace software, the server operating software, and every four years, the um, hardware needs to be upgraded. Um, and then the bottom there is my link to the all the the nitty gritty the details about upgrading. And I uh, wish you the best of luck uh, with your upgrade, those who are planning upgrades. And uh, as I say the, the rule of the best rule best practice or the rule of thumb is to test all your upgrades on a separate machine. Uh, so that you minimize the downtimes on the production machine, you minimize the user's inconvenience. And, and that concludes my uh, talk, Erna. Um, I'm ready for questions now. Which we sh uh, 20 minutes should be enough time for questions, I think. Hello, Erna? Thanks a lot, Hilton. That was very useful. So please uh, type your questions uh, in the tech chat or if you have any comments or if you want to share your approaches to upgrading. So this is the first question from Daniel. Okay, Daniel, um, I can't give you a time um, how long you should test the upgrade on the development server. Try and do as much as you can on the development server before you go into production. So now, how long that takes depends on the skills of the person doing the upgrade, obviously, the, the Linux or programming skills. Um, it depends on the versions that you're upgrading. If, you version, if you're just doing a, an incremental version, say from 5.4 to 5.5, it shouldn't take you too long to do the upgrade. But if you're doing an upgrade from 1.82 to 5.5, um, that's going to take quite a while, so prepare yourself for that. Okay, I can't give you uh, uh, a fixed time. It all depends on the, the, the environment around the upgrade and what, what, what versions were you doing a server upgrade, etc. But the, the, the rule of thumb is to do it first on a development server so that you don't affect production server downtimes. Uh, and then when you think you're ready for the production server, you transfer to the production server, then you prepare for it, and then you go for it. And I wish you the best of luck. Uh, Wilhelmine from Ghana, 
please hold the system in the flag. No, um, the, the system isn't that intelligent yet or self aware. Uh, they will warn you that there's an upgrade. Um, we normally find out about upgrades because we are subscribed to the mailing lists, the DSpace uh, help mailing list. And uh, also on the Twitter channels, they, they warn you that the latest DSpace has come out. For the um, server upgrades, uh, of course, you know, I'm enrolled to the uh, Ubuntu, mailing, Ubuntu server mailing list, so, so I get a notification there. And we know every two years the server of software is upgraded. Um, and then uh, hardware upgrades, um, you've got to speak to your, your data center administrator. Uh, they should normally keep a record of the digital uh, hardware assets in the data center and uh, when they go out of warranty. Thanks. Nathan, if you want to speak, uh, maybe it would be faster than writing. You're welcome to join us. Any other questions? Um, as I said earlier, um, upgrading is very important. The lesson from um, the, the um, the Panama Papers uh, should be taken. It should be a, it's a hard lesson to learn. We don't want to hear that anybody's machine has been hacked. And they've lost all those um, precious born digital assets. And also, please make sure that um, ideally, before you do a, any kind of upgrade, that you have some kind of disaster recovery backup system running. Okay, uh, it seems there's no more questions. Yeah. Must have done a pretty good <laughs> presentation. Yeah, everything was very clear. Thanks a lot, Hilton. So we have our next webinar on uh, th Thursday, uh, 28. So let me put the date. Uh, it's here. And hi, Nathan. Hey, hi. Uh, hi. I just wanted to reiterate uh, what Hilton has, has said, the importance of upgrades. Um, uh, from what, we, what, what we've seen so far as uh, the listing uh, Hilton has, has shown, uh, a lot of software in terms of uh, disk space running around the world are really the older versions. And, and, and that is a problem in terms of when you want to uh, use uh, newer facilities such as interoperability and as well as security and performance it's really a problem and uh, the big the best way to look at this is if you follow the proper way of installing software and that is the uh, prescribed uh, standards uh, or good practice then your upgrade will be less painful uh, I think I think that's the most important thing I would say. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Sir. So, maybe information about our next webinar. It's about uh, the space system administration and registration link. Is here and participation link uh, is following, and I will also email you all those details. So thanks a lot. Said thanks a lot for being with us today, and uh, hope to see you next week uh, and uh, have a very good rest of the day thank you bye